everyone. Welcome to day nine of Lent. I hope that your Lenten season is going well. Happy Friday. Um, so today I wanted to go into part two of Marian consecration and focus more on my personal consecration to Mary. So as I spoke about a few days ago, I talked about Mary as the Ark of the Covenant and how that was kind of this whole idea of Mary was the largest hurdle that I had to overcome when I was converting Catholic. But by the time that my, like, the confirmation day had come, I realized how much Mary played, like, the role that she played in the Christian faith and how much I wanted to be able to emulate the joy and the grace that she displayed. Like, the joyful mysteries in the rosary to me were absolutely amazing. Like, looking at the Annunciation and the grace that she just freely gave her yes to God. And then, like, having the baby, like, she's dedicating her entire life to raising this child, to raising the Son of God. And just that joy and the grace that came alongside essentially donating her life, sacrificing her life, sacrificing her body to carry this child. And so it was actually through my confirmation that somebody can choose a confirmation saint and put, put their name as their second middle name. But I chose, since my life was such a drastic change, I chose to add Marie to my first name. So I no longer went by Allie, but now I go by Allie Marie. And it's been that way for the last five years. And mostly anybody that I see now like knows that I go by Allie Marie. But um, there are still people I'll run into. And when I get called Allie, it's just sort of like it's nails on a chalkboard a little bit for me. Just because like my life as Allie was a wreck. Like it was just such a mess. And even as Allie Marie, like... My life is far from perfect. I make mistakes daily. I'm not, I'm no Mother Mary, trust me. Um, if we get my husband on here one of these days, I'm sure he could tell you that. But, um, but so when I was confirmed, I started wearing the Miraculous Medal, which I actually, this is a different like version of it. Mine's engraved in a cross. But, um, but essentially, this comes from St. Catherine Labore. In 1830, she had witnessed an apparition of Mary, and she heard Mary say to her this quote, God wishes to charge you with a mission. You will be contradicted, but do not fear. You will have the grace to do what is necessary. Tell your spiritual director all that passes within you. Times are evil in France and in the world. And this was in 1830 that Mother Mary said this to St. Catherine. And um, this was in Paris. So there's a shrine for the Miraculous Medal. And essentially this was approved by Pope Leo XIII in 1895 to be mass produced on um, medallions. So essentially there's an M with a cross above it. There's the pierced heart of Jesus and the broken heart of Mary. Um, there are a couple of quotes that says on here, if you guys want to know more about the Miraculous Medal, you can ask, and I can do another video on this in particular. But um, this is actually the second Miraculous Medal that I've had. So I wore one for years, the chain broke, and then I lost the medal. And so now my husband just got me this one for Valentine's Day. I tend to pick out my jewelry, and then he <laughs> gets it for me, kind of like my wedding ring. But um, but yes, uh, so I, I have this now and my mom actually helped out with getting a silver chain for it. So now it should last for a while at least, hopefully. So, um, but yeah, and essentially when, when Mary came to St. Catherine and everything, she essentially said, all who wear them will receive great graces. So graces doesn't mean a pain-free life. It doesn't mean that trouble won't befall the wearer. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just means that we will be granted, you know, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, the grounding, the, like, a grace, like a, um, you know, to be able to go forward with peace and not anger or joy and not sadness. And um, it's not to say that we won't experience the emotions that we do. I mean, the Bible even talks about, like, Jesus weeping. But we have the ability, like, this was why I chose Mary as my confirmation saint, because I, so I ended up kind of like consecrating my life to Mary before I even knew that that was a thing. So it was really cool, actually, as I was Catholic longer, because I think it was probably at least two years of being Catholic before I learned about, like, 33 Days to Morning Glory or St. Louis de Montfort or anything like that. And, um, just learning that there had been these amazing saints that had gone before me, before all of us, who had learned how much Mary can play, like the role that she can play in our lives. Like, 
yes, Christ is central. Like, that's why we receive him in the body and blood in the Eucharist at Mass, like, daily if we want. But, um... But she's still important. Like, if Mary's story wasn't real, then Christ couldn't be who he says he was because he had to be born of a virgin. And if Mary lied about that, then, like, his existence couldn't be what it is. So it's she's very important in our faith. She's very central. And I'm thankful for her walking with me through everything. Um, you know, as somebody who hopes to be a mother one day, just having her there by my side, like, ensuring me that everything will be okay. So there you have it. That's Marian Consecration Part 2. So I'm going to try to get my husband on tomorrow. It's Saturday, so he'll be home. So we'll see if I can get him to oblige. But um, if not, I'll be on here answering one of your other questions. So God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.